Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of the Reviews Roundup, where I go over all of the EPs and albums that I rated and reviewed this past month. Uh, but this past month being June, uh, it's August when I'm recording this, and I'm really behind. Uh, so we are going to look back at the stuff that came out back in June. So sorry if this is if you guys have been waiting on some of this for a while, but uh, it took me a while to catch up. So uh, let's get into it. First up is Lamorne's Forever, uh, in what feels like a mix of Justice and Daft Punk poured over a more commercialized type of house. Uh, Lamorne's Forever may be the freshest records this year, one of the freshest records this year. Uh, this record is like sometimes a serene synth ballad and other times a high velocity electro or progressive house fusion. Uh, it's a beautiful record with lots of open space and winding paths, and uh, I would say this deserves a bow tied 7 out of 10. Uh, next up, we've got Nurko's Discovery. Uh, Nurko's Discovery EP is much more of the same mellow dub sound that we've heard from him for a while now. Uh, that being said, some of the tracks here uh, are a highlight within his discography, I would say. Uh, but overall, I would say personally a fairly mid EP, and I would give this a Bowtide 6. Up next, we've got Shadent. He is here. Uh, hits of brilliance and moments of collapse. He is here is an odd mix of sounds and ideas. Uh, predominantly producing an eerie tone throughout, Shaden definitely keeps the feeling of the EP the same throughout, but doesn't quite hit the execution part in some areas. And so I would say this gives a, or deserves a bowtie to five. Up next, we've got Skylar's Blue Dream EP. Uh, Skylar's debut EP is definitely a well-rounded trap project. Uh, while I enjoyed the production and atmosphere of the EP, I didn't find much to really differentiate this from other trap EPs out there. Uh, I liked what I heard from this, but was not wanting a certain kind of X factor that I didn't quite feel like I got or never surfaced, but uh, this will get a bow tied six. Up next, we've got Eprom's Synthesism. Uh, Eprom is a staple in the wonky slash IDM world right now, and this album is just another testament to his dominance. Um, with some of the dirtiest beats and outlandish melodies, Synthesism is a is as beautiful as it is haunting. Uh, if anything, this album is just a tad too out there for me personally, um, for me to really truly appreciate it, which uh, is just a shame, I think, on my part, honestly. And this will score a bow tied seven. Uh, and then not in the EDM realm for the next little bit because I listen to more than just EDM. Uh, we've got Janelle Monae's The Age of Pleasure. Uh, this album could pretty much just be uh, as easily titled as Sex, the album. Uh, dominated by sexual tension and innuendos, The Age of Pleasure is meant to uh, both turn you on and turn you up. Uh, with instrumentational elements that lean into R&B, reggae, and funk, uh, this record is a very lively listen. And I give it a bow tied seven. Then we've got Jeremy Zucker's Is Nothing Sacred. Uh, if anything, Jeremy Zucker has proven his ability to put out constantly good uh, acoustic pop projects. Um, is Nothing Sacred is a personal EP that doesn't suffer from the monotone, or sorry, the monotony or shallow lyricism that pop records tend to convey, especially the more acoustic ones. And uh, I will give this a bowtie seven. They've got Lontalius, Life on the Edge of You. Uh, while not as strong as to date, Lontalius's fourth record, Life on the Edge of You, is a natural progression of his sound. Uh, the first record of his, which he truly kind of branches away from explicitly just acoustic sounds and instrumentation. Uh, but while I enjoy the usage of more synthesized elements all throughout, uh, I think it was the writing that didn't seem to pack quite as much of an emotional gut punch as I would have expected from previous records uh, from Lontalius. And I will give it a bowtie six. I've got Varian in the Realm of Hungry Ghosts. Uh, this is a quick hit of brutal industrial sounds on this EP. And what feels like the atmosphere of a dystopian nightmare, the entire EP feels like a personal haunting. It's a neat soundscape to hear from Varian, but not something I see myself returning to a whole bunch. Kind of a great first listen, but nothing I really love too much more beyond that. And I'll give it a bow tied six. Then we've got Godland's Bleach. Uh, well, Trap may have kind of taken a backseat in the limelight of EDM these last couple of years, uh, Godland brings a fairly energetic and engaging five-track EP. Uh, even years after the heydays of Trap, Godland brings fresh uh, beats that still feel, um, yeah, just as new and modern as they did once before. And this will score a Bowtie 7. Oh, goodness. Uh, Marshmallow and Trop Killers with Mellow Killers. Um... This is absolutely the lowest point for Marshmallow. I genuinely cannot fathom how a bunch of people got in a room, created this project, left, and went, yeah, this this is great. Um, flat kicks, weak snares, basic ass beats, muddy vocals, repetitive lyrics. There's almost nothing going for this EP. Uh, the only slight glimmer of hope was when Mellow would bring out some basic 2016 trap beat, and that was it. 
Um, but don't get me wrong, it's it's still not good. It's just not horrible. And uh, <laughs> who even is the audience for this record? I don't really understand. Um, in the club, these tracks are short and muddy. Uh, at a party, you won't be able to hear uh, like your you won't be able to hear much of it based off of awful mixing. Um, listening by yourself in any capacity, uh, there's just no reason to do that. Uh, I just I I I don't get the audience for this this thing. And the worst part of it all, personally, is that it's not even a cash grab. I can understand if it's a cash grab to some extent, uh, but it's not even doing that well streaming. Um, it's, it's doing quite poorly. Um, after just almost two months of it being out, four of the six tracks haven't even cracked uh, 200,000 Spotify streams, um, which is bad for Marshmallow. But um, yeah, I just don't get why this thing exists. Uh, it scores a bow tied one. Almost got zero. Uh, up next, we've got Automate's Robotico, Robotico, I want to say. But uh, yeah, even though I'm not a much of a rhythm enjoyer, this EP still feels like it lacks a lot of the basics for me. I really did like uh, Automate's Ego Stream EP back from 2020, uh, but that and this just feel like night and day difference in projects. Uh, Robotico uh, feels like it's in a constant state of emptiness. Uh, tracks don't really feel fleshed out um, sonically, and the EP just doesn't really gel that well together. Uh, and the rhythm singles reek of un in of unoriginality. And I will give this a bow tied three. Then we've got Aether, Shape the Light. Uh, when it comes down to it, I think Aether shines brightest in an EP format, not an album. Uh, something about the extended runtime and track lists kind of tend to get in Aether's way and maybe in his head where he feels like he's trying to do too much here. Uh, the album has some really great moments, particularly the back half, which I really did enjoy, uh, but it just feels like uh, just too messy when it get by the time it got to that point, um, both sonically and narratively. So I'll give this a bow tied five. Moments I enjoyed, but as, an all, as, a, as a collective unit, not so much. I've got Astro with Los Angeles. Uh, first things first, the concept behind Astro is quite fascinating. They're self-described as a headless creative um, that are looking to meld together music production from Web 2 and Web 3. And regardless of what you feel about NFTs and cryptos or whatever, but um, bringing together the likes of like a Tasaki, Pauline Her, Twirl, Camouflage, Hello World, Lost Boy, Daniel Allen, Rio Kragen, and Mark Johns, her compilation style album is still something that you should definitely look into. And um, yeah, so this all came, they all came under, it all came under the alias of Astro for this kind of album, which is truly a compilation project, if anything. But uh, yeah, when it's all said and done, though, I thought the production on this record was good, um, just nothing kind of special. It was a melting pot of producers all um, that kind of seemed to meld into one very safe and simplistic alias. Uh, the album is quite bright in its atmosphere and filled with short tracks that range from underground trap to light drum and bass. But uh, in the end, I think this, the songs were just a little bit too safe and lacking of the kind of flair that some of the individual producers are sort of known for in their own sound. So uh, not too bad, but I will give it a bow tied at six. Then we've got Akali's uh, Alina. Uh, Akali drops another consistent hybrid trap project to add to his already solid discography. Uh, if anything, the mixing on this record is top notch as every little sound throughout this EP is very pronounced and clean. Um, Akali even branches into some more lesser explored territory, mixing in some drum and bass and some bass house alongside his bread and butter trap. And this will score a bow tied seven. And speaking of trap, lots of trap, we've got Jules' Floor Space album, the debut. Uh, what an absolute treat this record was. Um, Jules manages to pull out some of his most cohesive, energetic, and well-produced uh, project to date in just production. Uh, the continuous nature of the record is great for a straight through listening experience, while each track still feels like they can stand alone by themselves. Uh, primarily residing within a hybrid trap genre, Jules isn't afraid to give a kind of quick hit of house or break beat here and there to kind of mix up the formula a little bit. I thought this was an incredible debut, magnificent record. It's going to score a bow tie to eight. Up next, we've got Kim Petras with Feed the Beast. Uh, Petras had a fairly dominant 2023 thanks to primarily the mega success that was Unholy with Sam Smith, which is the bonus track here on this record. But uh, her dance pop beats and streaming uh, lyrics make for a commercially fruitful record um, that will do quite well streaming and it has done already. Uh, in practice though, much of this track list is overblown, unnecessary, and just um, too typical, honestly, for me. Uh, nothing about this record is out of the ordinary apart from maybe some more explicitly EDM influences that more pop records don't have as much, but in the end, it's really just a drag of, a, of an album. And it was scored a bow, uh, score a bow tied four. 
Then Aussie, the I Loved You From The Day You Died. Uh, Aussie's 11th studio album is another modern classical dream. Uh, blending elements of orchestral and electronic synths, I Loved You From The Day You Died is hauntingly beautiful. Uh, there are a few artists out there that I truly believe can melt together classical orchestral strings with the glitchiness of modern synth melodies. Uh, the singles from this project are mesmerizing and the track list as a whole is like a story that you're listening to. And I score this a Bowtide 8. Then we've got Valley, Lost in Translation. This record is a fun blend of indie pop and angsty teen movie soundtrack. Uh, I think this is some of the uh, Valley's best production, I would say, and songwriting to date, uh, making for a very lively listening experience. I do think the emotional ballads are a bit tad cliche from this record, uh, but the radio singles make up for them quite easily. I did enjoy this one quite a bit. I will score Bowtide 7. Then we've got Con Conroe's Mellow Dramatic EP. Uh, Conroe's fusion of uh, deep house and electropop has always been uh, special to me and had a special place in my heart. And uh, boy, that style is feels like it's absolutely perfected on this EP, I must say. Uh, while I don't believe that there are really any individual standout tracks here, I think as a collective whole, the record is a marvelous package. Um, this is just the quintessential Summer Vibes EP, and I quite enjoyed it. And it'll score a Bowtide 8. And finally, we've got Boxcar with Algorithm. Uh, Boxcar is the also alias of Boombox Cartel. So this is Boombox's cartel's other alias. Um, as he, yeah, Boombox Cartel just ventures into the world of Tech House with this kind of new Boxcar alias. Um, when it's all said and done, though, the record isn't really anything particularly special or even all that good. Um, with dull beats and no tonal variation, Algorithm is an underwhelmingly boring record, I would say. And it'll score about Titan 5. Uh, that's been this month uh, of June uh, back a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of these albums, these EPs, anything uh, in the comment section below. But other than that, I am Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.